right, so for the matrix chain order what we are doing here is that we're calculating the chain order and we also are printing the parentheses right so here what we have is that let's start with uh, what the problem is so the problem is that uh, given the matrix here given the list of matrix you have to find the optimal way to combine them in a way um, so that you can reduce the amount of multiplications that you need to do for example it's different and this is the result right so we will receive an input and we have an output which shall be the number of multiplications and also what's the configuration for the matrix multiplication and you can see here that they are unique numbers what this really means is something like this uh, 30 35 35 15 uh, since each matrix is expected to be compatible uh, with the next matrix in line now so the configuration does make a difference for example if you multiply like this is going to be different than if you multiply if you multiply things like this Right, so so these are going to be different. How different? Let's see. First, if we want to multiply this, then we have 35 multiplied by 15 multiplied by 5. So this calculation is this one. And then you have to multiply this with this, which is going to be dimension 35 and 5. So it's going to be 30. thirty times. 45 times 5. Now here we have a1, a2, a3 and first we want to multiply this which is going to be and if we see the matrix it should be 30 times 35 times 15 this 3 and multiply by and then we make the multiplication between this matrix result with this and you can see that this is going to be this dimension so 30, 15 multiply by a3 which should be um, 15 phi right so this is compatible and we have multiplied by phi so we can see that this and this are the same right uh, so what is different between these two uh, type of configurations is uh, this one and you can see that this one has larger numbers right this one has 15 phi well, this one has 13 and 15, right? So this is more expensive. So that's why you can see that this is the suggested configuration for at least this part. And now you can see also that since we solved what's the best combination here, um, as long as we save it in memory somewhere, we are able to reuse that, com that computation. So that's the idea of dynamic programming. And here I have some examples, and I think the book also shows some examples of how are we storing things. So we have two big matrices, so two matrices. First, this one is going to store the split, and this is going to store the... It's going to store the, the computation size, right? So we don't need to recalculate the computation size for that. And if we see the, now, how does it print things, right? Let me show you some example in the future. So you can see that we go over the, the computation size and we start filling in the data, right? Now from this, we also have this, which is going to show us 
uh, what's the correct configuration to make. And the way it works is that it starts here, which is uh, this row, the, the count of matrices, uh, minus two, because you're always going to have two matrices. So, so the matrix is going to be um, the, the count of matrices dimensions, minus two, right? And what you do here is that you, this is the splitting. So if this is the split and it starts from zero to five, now we can see that this is a split. So we're gonna check zero, two and three, five, because it's going to be plus one for the right side. So for zero, two, you can see that it's zero the split again. And that means that we are splitting now zero, one and two, two. Right here, zero to one and two two, and here from the other side we have that three five. So it should be zero one two three five, and the split is at is at four. So we have this and this five five, uh, three five. So when when these are when these are single num the same numbers, we just put them uh, by themselves, right? So here in zero one. You're gonna find zero zero, so it becomes zero zero one one, and these go together, and these go together. And the way it works is that every time it asks for checking things, um, it's going to add a parenthesis, and then it's going to check things inside. And if this is, and if they have they have to check things again, it's going to check things again with the parenthesis inside, right? So what what they did of searching on the matrix, they split. If they are not the same number, then you're gonna start adding this parenthesis. Otherwise, you just print the the matrix. All right. All right. Let's go with matrix chain order. And here we have that. Well, what we are doing here is that first we are going the chain length, which is going to start from 2 to 2, the maximum count, which I believe uh, on this matrix is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right. You can see here, start from matrix chain 2, and what it does is that it's going to go over all the possible two by two configurations, right? And it's going to compute things, right? So for example, um, it's going to compute the, the cost. So as we have before, we have 15, 5, 10, 20, 25, so it's going to run, it's going to put the the computation, right? And it's going to co count the, the cost for it. So so we know that it, it splits, uh, if it splits as one, it means that it's going to split here, I believe, yes, or here, not sure. Zero one, I think it splits here, and what it does is that it should be just this, right? Fifteen, right? So I guess it's right. I forgot that um, it's free thirty-five, thirty-five, fifteen. So it splits here, and then it runs the computation of the cost, and you can see that uh, for now. There's no additional cost aside of this, right? Since and then we register the the split, and also we save the computation. So in this case, you can see fifteen seven fifty is stored here, and the same goes for here, here, etc. And right now it's just one split, right? Which is done here, and we save that configuration. So um, on the equivalent matrix. For the split, you have zero, 1, zero, 2, right? 
and here you can see that the split says two, three, four, so you have three, four, which really indicates that you are splitting here or that you are splitting here, right? And we run all the computations and we get these results over here. And then we start uh, with the matrix chain length three, which means now you have something like this, right? Three times 35 times five, which was the previous calculation. And now we have another matrix, which is five times 10. So this is a possible configuration. And we can see here, it should show something like that. And just to clarify, just to clarify, um, 15, oh, that was a 15. All right, 15. Just to clarify, um, here you can see the new computation. So we already know that this computation is going to cost us 15,750, right? That we stored it before. So that's um, why this is useful. So we, we, we search in the matrix since we know that this is already computed, right? And then we have a zero because the second matrix doesn't have any extra, you, do, you don't need to, it doesn't cost us to calculate this, right? Because it's already calculated, right? You, you, but you need to calculate this, which is the result of this, which is this number over here. And then we store the, the values and we do the same right, for each uh, possible configuration, 45, 15, 10, which we already did before, and then 10, and let's see. Huh. Um. Oops. It was a five. Okay. Okay, right. So we run the calculations that we already know. We already know this result, which is going to be 750, and we can see it here, right? And then, oh, and this is interesting because here you can see that there's two splits possible, right? You can make it, you can make the split either, I believe it's either here, right? Or either here. So 750 is actually this one. And then you could also have the 35, it's 13, 5, Sorry, 15, and then have the no. So this is the that computation, and the other one is uh, So this will be this one, right? And this will be this one, All right? And this is a split at two, element number two. As we can see, there was, so it should be zero, one, two. So the split is here and the zero, one, two, three. Zero, zero, one, two, three, four. Zero, one, two, three. Yeah, right, so this will be three. As you can see, split at three. So we store the, in memory, the decision that we made. Um, which is that the new minimum at this point, at three four, for, sorry for from two to four, is going to be three, and we can see this here. If we go to zero one two, zero one two three four, we can see that this is two, just as it was indicated here. at three. 
Zero one two. Zero one two. Do you say three or do you say four? Two four. I think that's one four, right? Three, four, well, I mean, at this position, I'm not sure which is now this position. I guess it's, it's not counting the zero, so it's one, two, one, two, three, four. All right now, let's go again. One, two, one, two, three, four. It's a two. It's a two. What? <laughs> what, are <you> talking? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> no, that's funny. Right, let's see the code. Right, so this is the idea. Uh, let me check it again. Right, so you can see here that now we are saving, we are following after the chain. We had to check for for the for the start branches, right? Um, given the start and ends of the of the ranges, right? Number of matrices minus chain length. So that's the maximum that we go through. So so for example if the series if the chain length will be six, you could only compute two here and then another one to here, right? Because this is a size six. So that's what it means here. And then we run a split here. And this is kind of uh, depending on the branch of the start and end, right? Uh, end is excluded always. And we calculate the cost as the sum of the start split and split end, which is plus one and end, uh, which always starts with zero if we didn't save it before. And then we say that cost here, right? Which is this matrix that we're gonna use in the future for for those computations that are already stored, that are already stored. And the dimensions here is the new dimensions. So you always have the, the start, the split plus one, and then plus one. And if the cost uh, is, we always try to minimize the cost. So if the new cost, the new multi -comp computation cost that we just calculated here is less than the one that we had before, which is interesting because it starts with zero. So how do you have something less than that? Uh, if this is less than this. Oh, okay, so here, I guess that when you start um, that number, then then you m make it infinite, just when you are on that range, right, so, so that it doesn't, but it should be zero if you haven't seen them before. And then we say, say the computation, and then we return the splits, and the minimum amount of multiplications, which is going to be, which are the, the, the matrices that you use for computation. That's, that's it, is, that's, is everything.